This is CBJ in 30, presented by Telhio Credit Union. Find out more and open an account online at telhio.org. Now, here's your host, Bob McGilligan. Everything's all right. Relax, take a deep breath, count to five, count to ten, whatever it takes for you, and remember, everything's going to be all right. Welcome to CBJ in 30, presented by Telhio Credit Union. I'm Bob McElligot. It doesn't feel like everything's going to be all right today after the Blue Jackets were completely dismantled and dominated by the Boston Bruins last night, losing 6-2 to two at Nationwide Arena. Five-game winning streak goes up in smoke. The Blue Jackets look discombobulated and out of sorts, but yet everything's going to be all right. Let's just put it out there right away, okay? We all knew that the toughest game remaining on the schedule was going to be against Boston. We all knew that. Now, there was hope that because the Blue Jackets put up seven goals on the Bruins the last time they were here, which was not that long ago, and because the Blue Jackets fought to an overtime loss in Boston several days after that, there was hope that they would be able to continue to do what they were doing and that they would beat the Boston Bruins, putting themselves in a tremendous spot maybe, going into last night, maybe even clinching a playoff berth. But none of that happened. And it should not come as a surprise because the Bruins came into that game yesterday having lost back-to-back games. Boston had a lot on the line. They were already locked into a matchup with the Toronto Maple Leafs in the first round. They didn't have home ice. The Leafs were playing last night. The Bruins were playing last night they could get that home ice. And they came out there like a team on a mission to get it. And that's what they did. Now, there might be part of your brain that is saying, okay, fine, but why didn't the Blue Jackets come out with that same intensity and that same drive? I'm not saying that they didn't. I just think they got away from the game plan. I think they I think they panicked at a point in the game and then started to play differently. And that without question, was the difference. But Boston just lost a game two days before in Detroit. In Detroit. Now, my argument on this is going to hold less water today because Detroit beat Pittsburgh last night. But my point is Detroit is not a playoff team. They're not going to the playoffs. They're still trying to figure out who they are and what they are. They're rebuilding. They're regrowing, if you will. So, they had lost that game to that team. And the Blue Jackets lost the game to them last night. My point is it happens at this time of the year. It happens to the best of them. Boston had 103 points when they went into Detroit and they lost. And that was their second loss in a row. The only problem is, and the only reason that you and I worry about it more, is because of the Blue Jackets' tenuous situation. Boston knows they're going to be in the playoffs. They know that they're going to you know, either be at home or be on the road in Toronto. They already know that. The Blue Jackets don't know anything, and they still don't know anything today. Well, that's not true. They know one thing. Win the last two games on the schedule, and you're going to the playoffs regardless. And that's why I say everything's going to be all right. Not easy games. Easy games on paper, but not easy games, because if you falter, make a mistake, screw up, then the Rangers win and or the Senators win. We all know that. But really, if the Blue Jackets play like the Blue Jackets, they should win those games. We all know that as well. And that's why I'm preaching the everything's all right thing today. Now, last night, when I said the Blue Jackets panicked, here's what I think. The first goal of the game was a fluke. It really was a fluke. And ironically, it wasn't the only goal like that last night. I don't know if you saw any highlights, but in the game between Minnesota and Winnipeg, an almost identical goal went into the net against the Winnipeg Jets last night. Almost identical. Pops up in the air, although in that game it didn't bounce off the back crossbar and come back off the shoulder like it did against Bobrovsky. It just went up in the air like a little pop-up, and nobody knew where it was, and it fell down and hit the goalie in the back and went in the net. So the first goal was a fluke goal. I was doing an interview earlier this morning, and somebody said to me, well, did you feel like right there that was uh, that was a bad sign, that it was uh, possibly going to be one of those nights? And my answer to that, and I'll tell you this, 
it, the answer was no. I didn't feel like that. Now, it might have been easy to feel like that had the Blue Jackets not played Montreal last week in a must-win game, and I watched Brett Kulak sneak a shot from the blue line through that Sergei Bobrovsky was looking to one side, and it came in from the other side, and he didn't see it. That was a bit of a fluke goal, too. Not of the same um, process, if you will, okay? Not of the same process. But my point is, that was a minute and 15 seconds into the game in a must-win game, and you're already down. In that one, I felt like, oh, this might not be a good night. And then the Blue Jackets eventually went on to win that game 6-2, to two, so it was fine. That goal mattered not. So last night when that goal went in, I didn't feel as though that was an insurmountable lead that the Boston Bruins had or anything like that. I didn't feel like that at all. As it turned out, it was insurmountable, but heck, we didn't know that at the time. So that first one was a fluke goal. That was uh, so be it. But I think by the time it got to the third goal, the Blue Jackets were doing things that they hadn't done for weeks. And those were not good things. Uh, the third goal, the puck is in front of Bobrovsky. I think Wierenski had it on his stick at one point. Jones had it on his stick at one point, And it kicked out and it went to Marchant. And he put it in the goal. There were more odd man rushes last night against the Blue Jackets than I have seen in a month and a half. So what does that say? Well, it simply says that they got away from their checking game. This team defense thing that we've been preaching for over a week, it went away. And I think it was when it got to two to nothing, I think they panicked a little bit. And I don't necessarily blame them for panicking, by the way. Because when you're playing a playoff team like the Boston Bruins and it gets to two nothing, I think that your first thought and reaction as a player is, oh man, we've got to get the next goal. We've got to get the next goal. We cannot let these guys continue to build on this. Because you already have to get two to tie. And Tuka Rask is playing well at that point, and you can already figure out that it's going to be a tough night to score goals. So I think you're saying, okay, we, we've got to get the next goal. And then you start to give up some of your defense to try to turn it into offense. And what has John Tortorella been saying through the five-game winning streak? What did he say almost every day? It is the defensive work that you put in that leads to the offensive chances. And all of a sudden the defense breaks. The offense doesn't come. Well, it doesn't come for you, but it comes for them. So I, I just think that they I think they panicked a little bit. And again, I it's justified. It's justified. They knew what was on the line. Boston knew what was on the line. They knew Boston was going to amp it up. And let's be completely honest again here. The Boston Bruins, the last two times the teams played, were missing guys. David Pasternak didn't play in either one of those games. He's a top-line winger. Uh, Kevin Miller didn't play in either one of those games. He's a defenseman that was back there throwing the body, playing tough. Uh, Matt Grizzlick didn't play in either one of those games. He's a defenseman. He had gotten hurt just before Boston came to Columbus last time around. Tory Krug missed one of those games because he was in, uh, injured. He's a good puck-moving defenseman on the blue line. Louis DeBrusque. Uh, Jake DeBrusque didn't play in one of those games. He played in the second game in Boston. He didn't play in the first game in Columbus because he was injured. And uh, I think I have it covered. That's a lot of players. That's a lot of players that were out of their lineup before, and they were back in now. So they had, they had their full complement in the game, and they are playing for positioning in the playoffs. Now they've got it. They did their job. Blue Jackets didn't do their job, but again, we all knew this was going to be the toughest game on the schedule that remained. All right? I knew going in the two toughest games from last Friday. I knew Nashville and Boston were the two that they would struggle with and maybe lose. Well, they won in Nashville. They lost to Boston. Okay, so be it. So you're back in the second wild card spot. You still control your own destiny. You still control what happens to you. And that's all you want to do. Well, you lost a little control because maybe you are stuck with the second wild card spot and that's the way it's going to be. But whether or not you make the playoffs, whether or not you play beyond Saturday night is completely up to you now if you're the Columbus Blue Jackets. Win the two games you have remaining, 
and you continue to play. Lose one or both and risk putting yourself at peril, at the peril of the Montreal Canadiens. It's very simple, but they still have control. And again, control is what you want to have. It's as simple as that. You know, another thing you have control of is where you put your money, where you make your investments, where you try to earn interest through savings or through CDs. You have control of all of that. And you know who can help you as you're in control? They can help to point you in directions that will put you in better control of your finances. The folks at Tell Ohio Credit Union, that's who will do it. Tell Ohio Credit Union has been doing that for people since 1934. They have a variety of accounts. They have personal loans. They have, they have what you're looking for. They have what you're looking for. If you're not sure that they do, if for some reason you don't want to believe me, which would be a grave mistake, well, you can just go online and find out for yourself. Go to tellhio.org. Click through the tabs. Get all the information. If you don't find what you're looking for or if you don't have time, maybe you're in the midst of a really busy day, and you want to check it out, but you don't have time to go through everything and search for yourself, click on the live chat option and ask somebody. It's very, very simple. Just ask. Or if you're driving around and you happen to see a Tell Ohio Credit Union office, stop by and talk to a live person about these very same things. Tell Ohio Credit Union is open to everyone in central and southwestern Ohio, and they are federally insured by NCUA. So the Blue Jackets got zero help last night. In fact, there was damage done outside of the game at Nationwide Arena last night because, you know, you're hoping that other teams are going to win and then they don't win and they don't help you out. You can't count on anybody. It's like real life. You just can't count on people anymore, right? If you want something done right, do it yourself. And that's the situation the Blue Jackets are left in after their loss last night. Here's the help they didn't get. The Maple Leafs didn't even show up at home. They got beaten by Carolina. 4-1 to one was the final. They started their backup goaltender, Garrett Sparks. He's not very good. There's lots of uh, stories today out of Toronto about the goaltending. You know, Frederick Anderson's done, done a good job as the starter. They have a weakness at backup. They know it. It was exploded last night. The writers are all over it. But anyway, is what it is. Carolina, they had a win. If they wanted to get back into the first wild card spot, they had to go in there and win. And that's exactly what they did. And they won, and they did it with authority. The other one was in uh, Montreal, where the Tampa Bay Lightning was playing. Tampa got up one to nothing. Then Nate Thompson scored a goal, his fifth of the year. This is what drives me crazy. You know, if it's Brendan Gallagher or Max Domi or something, okay. Nate Thompson, his fifth of the year, ties the game. Cedric Paquette uh, gave the uh, Lightning the 2-1 to one lead, and then it was three straight scored by Montreal, and they win the game. Now, again, and look, the Lightning is going to the playoffs. They are the best team in the entire league. They have been all year long. They didn't start Andre Vasilevsky. They didn't start Louis Domingue. Those are their two goalies. No, instead they went with Edward Pasquale. Who's that? I don't know. But I know he lost last night. So, again, it's this time of the year. You're resting players, and you're going to run into that. Teams that are already in, they want to rest players. It's what Tampa did last night. They probably feel like they can get a win with anyone in net. They found the guy that they can't get a win when he's playing in net. They found that guy last night. So 4-2 to two was the final score. Detroit, I told you this, I alluded to this. Detroit beat Pittsburgh 4-1 to one last night. That's a big loss for the Penguins. They have Detroit and the Rangers left on their schedule. They're trying to stay in third place. Or are they? (laughs) Maybe they don't want to go to the island and take on the New York Islanders. I wouldn't blame them. I mean, I can't think of a worse place to go for the playoffs than Long Island. I can't. I'd be glad to go there right now. That would mean the Blue Jackets could move all the way up and get into third. But let me tell you something. There could be no worse place to go than there for the playoffs. And, I mean, first of all, just the the terrible – there's there's nowhere to stay. There's nothing to do. And then that atmosphere, 
If you think that's not going to be one of the toughest atmospheres to win in in these playoffs, I think you're wrong. And Nassau Coliseum, because they're playing the first round there, that is going to be – we saw what it was like when the building was reopened that night. The energy was ridiculous. There was no way to beat the energy, quite honestly. So there could be no worse place to go than there. I mean, if you're going to go to Tampa, that's – the possibility of running into a buzzsaw, but at least you're going to be in Florida. If you're playing Washington, well, at least you're going to be in the nation's capital. But Long Island? Ugh. Anyway, what else happened last night? Predators helped themselves out, but they barely did it. They beat Buffalo 3-2 to two last night. It was Minnesota crushing Winnipeg 5-1. to one. So the Jets, uh, it's an interesting battle in the Central. I'll tell you about it in a minute. The Dallas Stars punched their ticket. They beat the Philadelphia Flyers 6-2 to two last night. Colorado Avalanche also was the 6-2 winner over the Edmonton Oilers. Oilers can't wait till this thing's over. They just cannot wait to go home and get a new GM and a new coach next year. Vancouver Canucks beat the San Jose Sharks 4-2. to two, And it was the LA Kings over the Arizona Coyotes 3-1. to one. That's a big loss for the Coyotes who are trying to get in to a wild card spot. It's going to be really tough now. So in the Metropolitan Division, um, you've got the Capitals, 102 points. You've got the Islanders with 99 points. You've got Pittsburgh with 97 points. With their win, Carolina now goes to uh, 95 points, one ahead of the Blue Jackets and the Canadians, who have 94 apiece. Blue Jackets do hold the tiebreaker, so they are in the second wild card spot. Uh, Boston now with 105 points ahead of Toronto by six, so they are going to get that home ice in the first round that they coveted. Now let's move on and look at the West and that central division where the Winnipeg Jets, Nashville Predators, they are just – they're going to screw around until the St. Louis Blues get in there. I'm telling you, that's what's possibly going to happen. They are opening the door for St. Louis. Let me put it to you that way. Uh, Winnipeg and Nashville both have 96 points. They've both played 80 games. Winnipeg's in first via the tiebreaker. St. Louis has 79 points. I'm sorry. St. Louis has 94 points. They've played 79 games. So right now they have a game in hand. If they win, it's a three-way tie once again. And all teams would have two games left. That's going to be very, very interesting there in that division. In the Pacific, more clear-cut. Calgary, they've won the West. They will have home ice advantage throughout the Western Conference with 107 points. San Jose now has 97 points. And you've got Vegas with 93 points. Now, this is interesting to me because Vegas now sits only four points behind San Jose. And they've got, well, each team has two games left. So they could tie in points. And then who would hold the tiebreaker? It would be, it would be San Jose because they have more regulation and overtime wins. So I guess that's still kind of set right there. The wild card teams, uh, Dallas, as I mentioned, they are in. Colorado's got 88 points for the second wild card spot. They're now four ahead of Arizona, and it looks like that's pretty much going to be a done deal. So that's the way the playoff picture looks out west. The other games that are being played tonight, I mentioned St. Louis has that game in hand. They'll play tonight against Chicago in Chicago. The Ottawa Senators are in New York to take on the Rangers tonight and the Calgary Flames Go to Anaheim where they take on the Ducks. So that's the other things going on around the National Hockey League. Uh, some news and notes from yesterday. Jeff Blasio, who's the head coach of Detroit, got a two-year contract extension, and then his team went out and beat the Pittsburgh Penguins. That was really not a surprise to me. I know that through the last couple of years, there have been people that have uh, wondered about Jeff Blasio's future as the head coach of the Detroit Red Wings. But again, you know, he hasn't really been tested, to be honest with you. I mean, they've been rebuilding the entire time that he's been there, ever since he took over for Mike Babcock. So they're getting better. They're getting better. They definitely are getting better. They've got young talent, and they've given him another couple of years to see how he is going to foster that talent and see what it's going to turn into. Uh, I had a chance to meet him uh, years ago when he was coaching in Grand Rapids. When I did the uh, Calder Cup final, it was Grand Rapids playing Syracuse. And I went to went to Grand Rapids for games three, four, and five. 
and Jeff Blaschel was, uh, he couldn't have been a more accommodating guy. He, he gave us plenty of time. I was doing, I was doing TV cause I was actually here at the time and the season was over for the blue jackets. And I went in there and I did those, uh, playoff games and he was, he was accommodating and, and giving us time to talk with him on every game day I had to sit down privately away from everybody else and, and give us the, you know, the straight scoop on what was happening with his team and his team won the Calder cup. So when you talk about a guy dealing with young talent, he's done it in the minors and he has a championship to show for it. So they're, they're letting him continue to build in Detroit. And again, I, I think that is absolutely the right thing to do. You're going in the right direction, right? You don't have to, you don't have to wonder uh, what the heck is going on. You just let him keep going and see if he can get there. So that's what Detroit uh, decided to do. Also yesterday, I know you saw this, Sergei Bobrovsky was named the number two star of the month of March, rightfully so with the numbers he put up. It kind of stinks that he got pulled from the game last night, but after the fourth goal, I mean – how many times do you want to face a two-on-one or a breakaway? It's just it was too much, and there was no reason to keep him in there because, quite frankly, if you look at things, he probably has to start both games this weekend, depending upon what happens, depending upon the situation that the Blue Jackets wind up in. I mean, uh, if you look at the games on Thursday, uh, what's going on on Thursday? Montreal is playing in Washington. New Jersey is playing at Carolina. So before the Blue Jackets play on Friday, they're going to have a much better idea. If Montreal loses in Washington and the Capitals are trying to make sure that they get that home ice and that they finish at the top of the division, so they do have something to play for. Um, If Montreal loses there, then you're already going to know with a win over the Rangers you're in. One way or the other, you're in. If New Jersey was to beat Carolina, I would pass out. I mean – if New Jersey was to beat Carolina, then you know that you have a chance to get back into the number one wild card spot on Friday. So that's uh, it's going to be interesting to watch the games tomorrow. Not so much the tonight games, but the tomorrow games are the ones that will have an impact. But So what I'm saying is, if Montreal wins and you know that you still must win, then Bobrovsky, Bobrovsky's starting in New York. Let's be honest. He's starting against the Rangers. Whether he starts in Ottawa or not is probably going to depend upon, A, whether or not you're already in the playoffs, and, B, if you can better your seeding. Because if you can't, if you're going to be stuck in a second wild card spot, then you might as well play somebody else and be done with it. So that's, you know, that's the situation. Sergey comes out. It wasn't because of his performance. It was because of the, the team's lack of defensive structure. Kept hanging him out to dry. And so... Uh, it was tough that he got pulled from that game, especially after he was named the number two star of the month for March. But it is what it is, as the saying goes, and the Blue Jackets will move on. That was their theme last night. Boy, oh boy, I went into that dressing room, and I talked to Oliver Bjorkstrand, and he right away, he said, uh, we're moving on. Yeah, we did. he gave me a couple of words, and we're moving on. And I asked another question, and it was a couple of words, and but we're moving on. And then I moved on to Cam Atkinson, and Atkinson started talking, and he said, uh, but we're moving on. So, obviously, that conversation happened after the game, right? John Tortorella came out for his press conference and said, we're moving on to our next game. That was the message. There's no doubt he went into that room and said, guys, here's the deal. We're moving on. Don't even talk about this game. Just talk about the next game. We're moving on. As if it was already a playoff series. You get beat in game one. Put it behind you. Let's get ready for the next game. So that was the attitude last night. That was the message. That was the mantra. And so that now that next one is going to be on Friday in New York against the Rangers. Programming note for you. As I do this show for you on uh, Wednesday, April the 3rd, every Wednesday, Jody Shelley and I get together and bring you the Inside Edge presented by Kia. It's a show that airs on the flagship station of the Blue Jackets Radio Network, 97.1 The Fan in Columbus. You can also get it on the Blue Jackets app. Just scroll down to the Listen Live option on the Blue Jackets app, and you'll find it there. And by the way, that Listen Live option on the Blue Jackets app, I'm just I'm going to tease this for you right now because I still don't have all of the details. But 
starting next week, that listen live option could become very important for you. Very important for you early in the day. Again, when I have more details, I'll tell you about it. But there are some preliminary plans to make that listen live button on the Blue Jackets app very important to you. Okay? That's all I'm going to tell you right now. And I know it's Wednesday. I'd love to tell you more, but I don't have it. I'm I'm waiting to finalize the details. You can also listen live to the show tonight at bluejackets.com. So our guest is going to be Oliver Bjorkstrand. This guy scored in six straight games. He's on fire. He was That was one of the feel-good things about last night. Bjorkstrand got a goal, and the Blue Jackets got two goals on the power play. Those were the two feel-good things for me. But Oliver Bjorkstrand will join Jody Shelley and I tonight on the Inside Edge presented by Kia. It airs from 7 to 8 o'clock Eastern time tonight on 97.1 The Fan, Blue Jackets app, and bluejackets.com. So the Blue Jackets will return to practice tomorrow and then take the trip to New York and get ready to take on the Rangers on Friday. And as I told you, with the games that are going on tomorrow night, the Blue Jackets will have a much better idea where they stand and what they need to do when they face the Rangers on Friday. That'll do it for today's edition of CBJ and 30 presented by Telhio Credit Union. Until tonight, I'm Bob McElligot saying so long.